there are a number of preliminary issues which first have to be attended to. Firstly, um, is that the state has to provide the accused with copies of the, of the, of the docket, what is commonly referred to as the further particulars. That um, I have, we have agreed with my learned friends will be done very, very shortly. Um, electronic copies of the docket will be provided, as is usual in these sorts of cases. And, and secondly, my lord, what, what, what needs to be sorted out is the question of a trial date. Um, as we mentioned to your lordship in chambers, um, the, the role planners in the DPP's office here in, in Durban have indicated to me that the roles are open for trial from the 12th of November. Uh, the DPP has mentioned this to the judge president. Your, your lordship is aware of it. So as far as the state is concerned, uh, we, we could start the trial on the 12th of November. But there are other issues which, are, which I'll now um, inform your lordship about. Um, firstly, by agreement between the state and um, our learned friends for accused numbers one and two, we will ask your lordship to postpone this matter to the 8th of June as the next provisional date, pending the matters which I will now inform your lordship about. So there, there, there is no, there's no fight about uh, the, the nature of the adjournment and the date of the adjournment. The, the purpose of the adjournment um, is twofold in principle. Firstly, in respect of accused number one, Mr. Zuma, <coughs> we've been informed uh, by, by our learned friends for Mr. Zuma that he wishes to bring a review application uh, concerning the decision to prosecute him again. And in that respect, we've been informed, and after discussions between us, that they hope to finalize the review papers by the middle of May, by the 15th of May. But uh, we will sort that out between the parties um, as, as the time goes on. There's also been mentioned that uh, there might, depending on the nature of the, of, uh, depending on the result, there might be further applications uh, for permanent stay, etc. Those issues are not being addressed now. That is as regards accused number one, Mr. Zuma. As far as the application of accused number two uh, is concerned, might I just mention that accused number two, rather unusually, is, a, is only a corporation. It is the company uh, Thail South Africa, PTY Limited, as represented by Ms. Uh, Christine Gurrier. And my lord, I should also just mention that by agreement between the parties, uh, she is she has been appointed as the company's representative, accused number two's representative. She is French. Uh, she understands English. She doesn't require an interpreter. And she does reside in France. So we've all agreed that uh, she will attend the various court appearances as necessary. But the state obviously has no problem with her traveling to and from um, our country and back to her place of residence in France. So I place that on record. Now, as far as, as accused number two fails, South Africa is concerned, uh, they have informed me that they wish to make representations to the DPP. So, by, again, by mutual arrangement between the parties, we have agreed that they will make these representations as expeditiously as possible, and the parties aim to have an answer relating to the representations by the next adjournment on the 8th of June. Um, my learned friends and I have discussed a timetable as to when uh, the various stages of representations will be, will be directed to us. And uh, hopefully, and certainly uh, also by, by the end of May, if not earlier, we will have hoped to have received the representations in their final form so that we can inform the court on the 8th of June, hopefully again, what the answer is. Um, my Lord, I think that is everything I wish to say relating to the reasons for the adjournment. And, uh, what the, what the party's attitude is. Uh, the final matter I should just mention is that there is, to our knowledge, a Western Cape High Court application which, which uh, in some way uh, is, is, is aimed to affect the current proceedings. There's an application in the Western Cape High Court by a body styling itself, and I quote, uh, these, these words don't come from me, my lord, uh, the, the body is called the SA Natives Forum. And the respondents in that matter are various uh, parties, including uh, the, N the NPA and the NDPP. And that seeks to interfere with the further conduct of this trial before your lordship now in this 
the, the attitude of the parties in this court, and that includes, I think, my learned friends also, is that that matter has no bearing on the proceedings currently um, be before your Lordship. The, the NPA and the LEPP are opposing that matter. I understand that uh, accused number one, in as much as he might be a respondent, has, has, has abided or intends abiding. So, as, as between the parties before your Lordship, there's no issue relating to that other case. So, so these proceedings will continue without regard uh, to, uh, to the to pending proceedings in the Cape Town Court. And we as the state naturally hope that, uh, that those proceedings will be, will be dismissed, that the application will be dismissed. And that is our attitude. So, yeah. so, so, my Lord, yes, after checking with my learned colleagues, I think that is all I wish to address you on. And then our application is that by agreement between the parties, the matter be postponed to the 8th of June as a provisional date for the reasons which I've, I've given your Lordship. Unless the court wishes to hear me on any other aspect, that would be the state's <coughs> application. That's the piece of court. Our agreement to the adjournment to the 8th of June 2018 as a provisional date. In relation to all other matters, my Lord, we say that our position remains fully reserved. There will be an application to challenge the legitimacy of the prosecution. That we have spoken about with my learned friend, Mr. Downer, about dates and how that will be dealt with. Of course, on the 8th of June, everyone will be in a better position to work out where the matter proceeds from there. Uh, and then, my Lord, uh, the reference to trial and the 12th of November that was suggested, my Lord, that is really a matter which will have to be discussed on the next occasion. So for now, we just record that we're not agreeing to any subsequent enrollment until we're here on the 8th of June when the matter is reassessed. That is our position. Thank you. Thank you. My Lord, accused number two has nothing to add to that which was put on record by Mr. Dow. My Lord, might I just say finally and just remind the court that both accused, having been summoned to this court, are, are on warning in the colloquial terms, and I would ask that the court uh, then uh, warn the accused to appear on the 8th of June. Bail conditions and, and further conditions relating to their release do not apply in cases such as this where the accused are summoned to court, as indeed they were in 2007. May please the court. And this matter has been outlined by Council for the State, and it seems as if the defence is also in agreement where the submission is made on behalf of uh, the State regarding the future conduct of this matter. For the reasons advanced by Council for the State in agreement with the defence, this matter is adjourned to the 8th of June 2018, which is a provisional date. And the two accused before court, having been summoned to appear before this court, are released on bail. Sorry, are released on warning, rather. <laughs> Thank you.